is a quick first look at the new Photos app for Mac users. I want to take a few moments and talk about whether or not this is a suitable replacement for Aperture users. Those who are trying to decide and are Mac users moving forward, should they invest in Lightroom or will this do everything that they need it to do? And just look kind of at the interface. Now, real quick, this is still technically a beta program. It is not out for the general public, although you can easily find the download links. They're calling it version 1.0. So keep in mind that there are still things that may change slightly from what I show you now to what we actually get in a few weeks when this is released. But it feels like a completed app uh, and I haven't run into any serious bugs. I also haven't used it a ton. But I want to walk through real quick and talk a little bit about getting pictures in, editing those pictures, some of the projects that are offered, and getting pictures out. And I'm going to talk fast and kind of run through this quick. So I've already brought some pictures in. These are just kind of ones that are sitting in my quick folder that I don't really organize too well because I just use them once and then they go away. It's organized right now under the year and we have these small thumbnails. I can move forward and it will break it down by the months within the year and I can move forward once more and come in closer to an album. So you've got that quick view. You can also, when you're in this kind of 30,000 foot view, uh, you can just move your mouse. I'm holding down the left mouse button and move it through and you'll see bigger versions of these images and then you can just let go and there it is right there. And we can go back and back and back again till we get to something else. You also have the option of albums uh, that you create separate from this kind of date organization. And you have the ability to, to have face recognition turned on. And I've done that here and it has recognized, oh, I, I fed it a few images of me, said it's Toby, a few of Christina, and it found a bunch more. Now, you can see that its face recognition algorithm is certainly not perfect because it is suggesting these as other faces that need to be named. It's got three here it found, but then these, these are pens, uh, colorful pens, these are frames. I don't even know what it's finding here. So that needs some work still. But let's go back and talk about getting more images in. You hit the import button, I have an SD card slid into my computer. It is uh, images from the D5500 over the last day or so, or last a couple of days actually. And you can see that you can automatically check open photos for this device. So in the future, when you slide in this card from this camera, it will pop open photos and be ready to import them for you. You can import all of them or selected ones. Uh, you can delete after import. Quick pro tip, I never recommend doing this. I have heard horror stories where for some reason or another, the computer thinks they're imported. You go to format the card and then you find out that they didn't actually get imported. Uh, or sorry, not format the card, but you've select deleted. So they get deleted after the computer thinks. The paranoid side of me always likes to leave this unchecked. Per, um, confirm that all of the images are imported, and then format the card. So, and I also don't usually recommend like picking and choosing what you want to import here. It really is about hitting import all new photos and figuring it out later. This is not a great place to kind of make the decision about whether or not this picture uh, is worth importing. As they're coming in, ones that are JPEGs are marked with a little J, ones without are a raw file, and so that is then, um, a file that Lightroom, or sorry, Lightroom, Photos will happily handle and allow you to edit. And while it's doing that, we can still do other things. We can go back to Photos. Uh, these new ones don't appear just yet. Uh, and we can talk about the shared while we wait and we see the little timer up here. I'm not going to talk about this today. I'll just say that the iCloud photo sharing software side of this is not something that I use typically. Uh, but for the occasional photographer, or, or for even for the enthusiast who isn't creating a ton of RAW, the free space they give you is quite nice. It gets, means all of your pictures are backed up, and, and that is critical. That is a huge, important thing to have your precious moments backed up. Uh, but if you are you know, a higher-end enthusiast taking lots of pictures, especially some RAW, you're certainly going to run up against their, their limits for the free quickly and have to pay for that. So all the pictures are in. I got a little notification on the other monitor that said they're all in. So let's go back over here to photos uh, and move forward a little bit and see if we can find any of the ones that just got imported off of that Nikon. You know, actually 
technically some of them might have been imported already. So, um, oh, here's some new ones. So there's some new ones right here that just got imported. I just recognized them in there as well. Now, let's take an image that we want to edit. I can double click the image to load it up uh, and see it nice and large. And we can even uh, zoom in here to check on the detail. That's a 154%. So let's back up a little bit. Uh, we can switch to the other images in that album or in that date category if we want to. We can favorite this image. And that right there is one of the first limitations between this program and Lightroom and Aperture. Lightroom and Aperture both give you a lot of really granular ways to uh, rate your images one to five stars, color labels, flag picks, all of that is available to you. And so far in photos, it seems like you can favorite them and that's it. You can of course come into the info and get all of your metadata here and you can add a keyword that may help you quote unquote, rate them down the road, uh, but it certainly isn't the same as being able to hit one star, two star, and then filtering by those. You are able to, and we'll look at this in a minute, create a smart album based on keywords and descriptors and whether or not it's been favored. So you have control, but not, not at the level of Lightroom. We can come over here and add this photo to a project or an album or a smart album. These book, calendar, card, slideshow prints are all projects, but we'll come back to that. Let's hit edit. This brings up this little menu right here on the right. And we've got a one click enhance. There you go. Look like it pumped up the contrast a little bit, maybe a little bit of added saturation. Let's go back to the original. The changes you are making, JPEG or RAW, are non-destructive, similar to Lightroom and Aperture. You are not touching the original, you're working on copies of them. And when you go to export, under file, export, you can see export the photo or export the unmodified original even after you've made changes. You can rotate it. That's all that option gives you. You can crop, straighten, and change the aspect ratio here. So we can just grab this little wheel and drag to change the uh, rotation or sorry, I should say straighten it. We can come in here and change our aspect ratio. Maybe we want this to go on to Instagram. So something like that. Um, we can flip it and we can pick auto, which should automatically straighten it. And Lightroom has this tool too, and I found it to be very good in Lightroom often. Uh, been a little, my limited experience here with photos, not as good. Uh, and let's go down to filters. This is where I'm going to bring up another huge difference between Lightroom and Aperture, where you can have these kind of preset recipes that you either build or you buy or find online. And Christina and I have produced several of them that are part of our Lightroom training guides. And for a really small amount of money, you can get 24 nice presets from us. I don't see at this time any way to add new presets in here. Uh, these are called filters, not presets, and these seem to be the only ones you got. I have to imagine that's coming at some point down the future, uh, but for now you can just click through and choose one of these or revert to original. Now we get down into the power here. Let me hold over for a second to see that option button. Adjust. In the adjust menu, I've opened up all the panels already. These are every single panel you have, and there's a lot of similarities here with Lightroom and Aperture. You have these adjustments. You can kind of consider this the basic panel up here, your black and white, sharpen, noise, vignette. Uh, missing your curve control, you know, although you do have levels, which offer some similarities. Also missing is really the lens correction tools, uh, which are very powerful in Lightroom. Uh, and there's a few other things missing, but a lot of it is here. So I can come in here and maybe I want to make that, well, yeah, a little bit brighter up there, really brighten that up. And bring up the contrast and bring up the black point. And sure, let's add a little bit of saturation, but not too much. Don't want to overdo it. Uh, and if you want to see what any of these, what your picture looks like with any of these sections off, you've got the little on off switch or the check mark right here that allows you to do that. Very similar to Lightroom. And each of them has an auto button as well that will automatically apply what Photos thinks is the best setting for you for that uh, thing. And of course you have an auto, uh, well that is this button here, enhance, purportedly, purportedly probably adjusts all of these for the best look. Uh, and then you can, you can even set the white balance based on an area. 
but that's not going to help it very much. And as I said, you have your levels down here as well, and you can hit auto there. Last tool available to you is this retouch tool, which will allow you to take out an area of an image that doesn't look as good. This image, not so good. So let's say done with this, whoops, sorry. Let's say done with this one. Let's go back here, let's go back here. Well, actually let's go to, where'd it go? I lost it. Well, we'll take this one. So here we are in um, one of the little X-ray color checker shots that I was doing, and we're gonna click the edit button, and we're gonna come back down here to retouch. And it allows you, let's say I wanna get rid of this little gray fleck of something right here. I'm gonna click it, and that was the healing, and you can see it didn't do such a good job. So I'm gonna sample from another area by holding down the Alt button, or uh, Option button, and clicking to sample, and now, it does a better job. And we zoom in with the Z key. And so a lot of keyboard shortcuts are similar. You can see that it's done quite a nice job in there. And you can also see that it's quite dirty uh, looking. It's picking up a lot of little flecks of stuff from the burlap thing that's sitting there. Um, but let's just for fun click on that guy. And you can see that it, it you know, it's okay. Uh, not as powerful as Lightroom, but not bad. Uh, and not as powerful as Photoshop. So let's resample, option click and maybe color that out right there. So that was great. That is all of your editing tools available to you. The enhance, rotate, crop, filters, adjust, and retouch. Let's say done. And oh, let's say favorite because we edited this. And we talked about share it. We talked about albums. Uh, we can go back through like so. And you have your, uh, okay, that's our, let's go to projects now. Projects allow you to create things like a book, a calendar, a card, a slideshow, and prints. Most of these live within the Apple ecosystem. So you're going to be buying the Apple books, Apple calendars, and cards, which I have to say I found to be good values, good quality, uh, and they make it very, very easy. So let's go back to my photos for a second, and let's go to something more exciting with some, here we go. Let's go into this watery scenes and let's select these guys right here and say that we want to create a calendar with them. So I'm gonna click calendar and 20 bucks for a decent calendar and big date one right here looks good. This is just the templates and there it is. It has taken my pictures and automatically put them in here and I can change the layout options from one photo to four photos uh, all very quickly, very easily. I can change the color of this. Maybe slate gray looks better. Oh, maybe I'd want each picture to be, each calendar page to be different based on what's happening in there if you want. So that's all available to you within that. Let's look at the other. I'm not gonna go over prints and cards because I think those are really self-explanatory, but let's take these same images and go to slideshow and look at the options here. Let's just call it Icy Brook or Ice Brook. All right, we've got three options down the right hand side. We've got the theme, the Ken Burns, where you have the kind of crop in, slow pan of still photos. We have an origami where things are flipping around. We have reflections, which really screams to me 2005, but you could use it. Some sliding panels, vintage, classic, which is probably what I would use mostly in magazine. But, it, you know, let's do Ken Burns for a second. It's got my pictures across the bottom. If I wanted to rearrange them, just click and drag. I can rearrange them like that. Hit play. And I think it's picking up some music that automatically comes with the program for each of these. That looks quite nice. Uh, and you can come in here. Yep, hello, Ken Burns. Uh, and there aren't any others there, but you can come into your music library and pick something else up. Hopefully your music library is not as messy as mine. And you can say fit to the music or custom scale photos to screen. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, and you can add more text or photos here if you wanted to, if you decided that you hadn't added enough. And then you can export this out as a video file. Honestly, I have not used iPhoto a ton. So I'd love to hear from you all in the comments um, you know, I know slideshow function was in iPhoto. M many of these options were in there, but from what I've been reading online and just a little bit of playing I've done, it feels a little tighter, a little neater, and it makes more sense to me. iPhoto, I never really could wrap my head around, and it never felt like it really gave me the tools that I wanted. So 
The last thing we want to talk about is getting a picture out of here. Oh, well, I showed you that. Export. Let's export this one photo. And you have an option. JPEG, TIFF, or PNG. Quality. Size. And so it looks like you can set a custom size as well. And again, in Lightroom and Aperture, you can set up export presets that make changes for you on export, all kinds of things, write certain metadata in, and you can save those and then say, here, I wanna export these five images for Facebook, and you've already set up a preset for that. Or for the blog, and you've already set up a preset, maybe you want them 2400 pixels wide for that. So that part of this feels limiting, and the same with the import. Another huge, well, in general, Lightroom and Aperture give you a ton of tools that allow you to very efficiently work with not just one picture, but a ton of pictures in quick succession and quick different ways. So for instance, if I wanted to apply the moon keyword to all of these images, I'm not sure how I'd do that. Can I select? Well, it looks like it's got moon in there for one. Let's type it again and see what happens. Do they all have moon now? Let's unselect one. Oh, I just duplicated by accident. That's what you get when you try to use keyboard shortcuts. No, see, so they don't all have the keyword. How could I apply the same keyword to all of these quickly? Somebody let me know in the comments because that is one thing that Lightroom and Aperture let you, allows you to do. You can come back into edit real quick. Let's say that we did make changes to this. Let's just do, well, let's do something drastic like process filter so we can really see the difference. That is ugly, but what we can do now is we can copy these adjustments and we can go to one of these others and we can paste the adjustments. Why not? No, I thought we would be able to. It allowed me to copy them. Maybe I can't be in this. Maybe I have to be in adjustments. All right, let's try to make our own adjustments. Let's really raise that and lower that. Sure, so we can really see it. Copy adjustments, come over here. No, paste adjustments. Well, I'm curious, do we have to be outside of the program? No, or outside of the editing? No, okay. That might be a bug. That might be something that they don't quite have working yet, but we should be able to apply those adjustments. And my point there being Lightroom allows you to do that very efficiently uh, and also really Dial in which adjustments do you want to change? You've just changed a bunch about an image. You've added a gradual fil or a graduated filter. You've changed the color balance. And on the next image, all you really want to apply is the color balance from the first one or to the next 10. And Lightroom and Aperture allows you to do that really nicely. So again, limited, but there's a good bit of power under the hood here. And the interface certainly is clean. And I, I appreciate that. It looks nice. If you've got any questions about Photos, which is currently in beta, or Lightroom, which we have training videos out for a very affordable price. You can look for the link for that right down below. Just leave a comment down below. I'd be happy to answer those questions or comments. Thanks for watching.